Okay, so we're going to be doing reflexology today and um, me and Melissa have had a nice chat before and I've asked about um, any injuries, any health conditions um, or any allergies as well and so uh, we're all good to go ahead from here into the treatment. Now for the purpose of the video I'm going to be talking you and Melissa through uh, what I'm doing but often when I do treatments anyway, I find it quite nice to do um, just calmly speaking through the treatment with the client. I was saying um, earlier to Melissa that when we're working on the feet, because the feet is so far away from the head, if we have a busy mind, um, it can be really easy to get distracted if you if you do suffer with anxiety or stress. So just having that calm voice to talk you through everything can be a great way to help you get out of that busy mind and into into the into the treatment. And a massage you might actually place the sage on the body, but I'm just going to bring the scent around the body. So Melissa, at this point, as much as you're breathing into the belly, take the breath through the nose as well here. That's nice, yeah. And we take on energy throughout our day, the people that we meet, the places that we go. And so this is an opportunity to just come back to you, come back to your aura, your energy. And sage is a great way to help contribute to that calming down so along with the beautiful sage that we've just used I'm also just going to light some incense it's just a very nice um, ritual to do at the start of a treatment and because we're doing reflexology, the incense is a little bit further away from the head. So the smokiness from the incense is not going to be so intense. I'm just going to out of space. It's always a really lovely um, self-care practice to light some incense at the end of a long day. So I'm going to just pop that over here. I'll let that burn for a few moments. Okay. So I'm going to be working on the feet. Reflexology is such a beautiful, powerful treatment. We're working with different points on the feet that link up to the, uh, to the nervous system. And so essentially we have all of these nerve endings that run down the body and come out through the feet. They also come out all the different extremities, so around the hands, face, ears. But I like to work best with the feet. Um, the hands are a lovely way to begin or end a treatment, um, but it's not quite as powerful as working with the feet. Um, the hands could also be a really great option for somebody who is maybe a little bit more frail, so maybe somebody elderly or somebody who's poorly. It could be a nice alternative for them. I'm going to use some warm stones as well. I love using warm stones. And 
and I just find that I get cold feet <laughs> and um, a lot of my clients get cold feet so when I had the opportunity to train hot stones it was a no-brainer because it stops the client's feet from getting cold and you can also work really beautifully into the into the feet as well so I'm going to begin by um, cleansing the feet so going back to reflexology and what it's all about as I mentioned we have all these nerve endings that come out through the extremities especially the feet and when we push on these different points in the feet they link up to different parts of the body through our nerve endings so the left side of the body comes out through the left foot, right side of the body comes out through the right foot. When we push into these different points, they can help restore balance through those nerve endings. Nerve endings linking up through to the glands, the glands that produce hormones. Hormones are what makes us feel any type of way. Some people experience undiagnosed pain and they don't know what's wrong with them and they can come to reflexology and it can help unblock some of those points that were causing a misfire in the hormones. A lot of people have reflexology because it helps with sleep, it helps with headaches. I also have a lot of clients with like fibromyalgia. And just a lot of people who just want to come for a treatment because it feels good. Um, you know, a lot of, for, for me having reflexology is just nice because um, it makes me feel more restored, more in balance. Again, it helps with sleep. It's recommended to have a course of reflexology though, so um, if somebody is trying to work on a specific ailment, you know, if they have, you know, maybe they suffer with migraines, then I'll recommend like once a fortnight, once a week even if they could, as we start to work on those um, issues. But for someone just looking for that relaxation, once every three or four weeks is good. It's really whatever you can afford and whatever you can commit the time to. Even just something once every now and again is better than nothing. So I'm gonna be doing like a, a taster of reflexology, like a mini treatment to give you the idea of what this treatment is all about. I'm going to talk through some of the different points that I'm going to work through. Right now I'm just I'm just warming the feet up and getting I'm going to say used to this part of the body being moved and touched. Uh, obviously our feet work very hard for us all day long and so actually just the massage part is, is just really nice because it helps us to release tension and 
as we work through the feet today, I'm going to be feeling for different tension spots. areas of imbalance and maybe spending and paying a little bit more time and attention on those areas. Essentially when we work on the feet in reflexology the feet are a replicant of the body itself so at the top we have the head and then we move down the spine right down to the pelvis, lower back and the hormonal reflexes right around here. And so the feet really map out the rest of the body and it's actually amazing the results that people get from this treatment. And it's amazing what shows up on the feet as imbalance and then we replicate that back to the client and they're like, oh, I was having problems with that. It's, it's crazy how it shows up on the feet. It's a very powerful treatment. And the first thing I want to establish is just if there's more mobility in one side than the other. So I'm just going to Move the foot. We want to try and just keep this whole foot, ankle, leg super relaxed. Just allowing me to move the foot. And quite a lot of tightness there in the ankles. No Achilles. You know, often um, people will come with specific foot problems for reflexology and as much as reflexology is incredible for, you know, tight muscles in the feet, um, it's not podiatry. Um, so often if somebody has specific problems with their feet, I'll recommend them to a podiatrist or maybe if they need like orthotics fitted for their shoes. Sometimes the two treatments go hand in hand. Okay. So I'm going to cover up one side. Warm. And I'm going to focus in on the side first. So I'm going to begin by just separating the foot into different zones, working up. From the bottom of the foot to the top. This is a good way just to bring the nerve ending points into awareness that the treatment is beginning and it's a really great way for me to scan the feet noticing any tension spots maybe that I'm going to work on and in a taster treatment um, like we're doing today. Um, that's quite important because we won't do the whole um, nervous system, the whole endocrine system. We're going to focus on the skeletal system. We're going to focus on the digestive system. And I'm going to notice imbalances on other parts, on other systems, and focus on them if needs be. Pressing into hypothalamus at the top of the toe, which is like our master gland. Okay, the 
do that whole process on the other side. There's lots of different ways that um, people do reflexology. It depends on the training that you have. Um, but my training was always to switch between feet. I prefer it that way. And I think that's because if you do the whole thing on one foot and then um, and then the whole thing on the other foot, I think that you kind of lose the sensation on one foot. Whereas you kind of keep both feet aware and active if you switch between the two. That one's still nice and warm. <laughs> so, I'm going to do the same thing on the side. You can see, right, how the toes get cold? It's also super common, you know, if people come for their very first reflexology treatment um, that the feet feel very imbalanced because they've never had reflexology before and sometimes it can take like three treatments, four treatments to really get some results because um, or to really feel for those proper imbalances that are authentic to that person. That's what I find personally anyway um, because I think that the feet need to get used to the idea of the treatment that's my opinion anyway I think that the more treatments you do the more receptive the feet become so I'm going to switch feet again and now I'm going to I'm going to begin working the skeletal system as well as um, the sinus points which are around the toes. So I'm working up first the neck into the pituitary gland and the head. This one's pretty good. And if we feel any like, some people say it's a bit like bubble wrap, a bit, a bit crunchy, just work on those points for a bit longer. And if there's any pain, you just let me know, okay? Okay, this is feeling good. Often, you know, since um, like COVID and everything, like that people have had a lot of imbalance around the lungs and the diaphragm I think there's just a little bit of historical blockage there from people who were poorly um, okay I'm gonna just see how we feel down the spine hmm Often that the lower back does tend to um, be a little bit sore on some people, and that's super common. They're like the lower back, hips, all of that kind of area is where a lot of our movements are derived from. So it's super common to have tightness there. A lot of these imbalances are simply just that, you know, they're nothing untoward, nothing to be scared of, just simply imbalances. And the amazing thing with 
reflexology is there's no harm that can ever be done from this treatment. It is only good. <laughs> the very worst, you just get a lovely foot massage. The very best, we are maybe bringing the body into balance, reducing any pain in the body. It can also be a lovely treatment for anxiety as well, stress. Okay, so I'm going to come to the shoulder point. Very, very common that this is imbalanced, which it definitely is here. You can probably even feel like crunch, crunch. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to work my way down the leg and the knee, elbow. I mean, some people have really sensitive feet. It's, you know, if people have extremely sensitive tickly feet, then maybe it's not the treatment for you. But if you're worried about, is this a tickly treatment? It absolutely does not have to be tickly in any way. It's you know, we do these firm strokes and then we're pressing into the point. So, um, unless you are literally on the extreme side of tickly, then you should be okay. Just gonna see how the adrenals feel, a fight or flight response. Oops, a little bit out there. This part of the foot is a great place to massage when you suffer with anxiety. And it's quite an easy place to reach if you have the flexibility to reach for your feet. You can also use like a tennis ball underfoot and roll your feet out. I would always recommend that. Try and fit it into your daily routine um, because it will start to stimulate all those, again, nerve endings bringing you back into balance. Okay, so I'm going to come to the other side now. A little bit of a difference between the two sides. The neck is a little bit tighter on this side. And we did a massage earlier and there was definite imbalance between the two shoulders, linking to the neck of course. As I mentioned, this is going to be a, like a taster version of reflexology today. I'm going to show some of the points that we do, but not all of them. So you can get an idea of what you might experience in a treatment. Okay. So let's work down the spine. reflexology is you can be intuitive with whether it's going to be more um, pushing or massaging. Everyone has a different technique and different techniques can be beneficial in different ways. Reflexology can be good for things like menopause or hormonal problems as well as fertility. Lots of people go specifically for fertility with reflexology. Um, and different techniques can be more beneficial for different ailments and different wants and needs. It's definitely some balance around that point. The adrenals. Okay, let's come to the shoulders. Mm, not as bad. Still tight. And the shoulder point here. Down the leg, knee and elbow. Okay. 
So I'm now going to work a bit more on the digestive system. I think I'm also going to just, just do a little bit around the hips as well because um, we have the sciatic nerve that we can access quite easily in reflexology. I'm just going to work around this part here on the ankle. work our way just a little bit up the side of the leg. And I must stress that reflexology should never be painful. Yes, you might feel a little bit of a pushback. Um, you might just sense that there's a bit of tightness there, but it's like a massage. It should feel good. It shouldn't feel painful. As much as there's some incredible benefits we can have from this treatment, it's also super holistic and relaxing. That's very interesting to do as well as a, a practitioner <laughs> or as a therapist. Okay. So, do the hip on the other side. Um, the reason I wanted to do digestion or the digestive system is because it links up to so many other factors. Um, so, you know, our emotions can link up to our gut health. Um, things like how we, of course, digest food, but um, also our metabolism, our hormone levels can be sometimes affected, our sugar levels. So that's why I do like to incorporate this system into the taster session. So for the digestive system, we need both feet exposed because we start um, on one side and we keep switching between the two. So I'm going to start just with the gallbladder. Okay. And just walk along. It feels quite good. And I'm not going to hold these points for too long today. Sometimes when you have reflexology and you spend a lot of time with the client holding on these points of imbalance, um, we can have quite powerful um, reactions. So after having reflexology, you've got to be aware of your body the next 24 hours. Things like our digestive um, processes change, um, sleep changes, um, so sometimes, as with a lot of treatments, we have more of a negative reaction for the first 24 hours, but after 48 hours, we start to really reap the benefits. Um, but as I was mentioning, if you push into a point for a really long period of time, it could incur um, more of a um, more of a reaction. So I'm going to not hold for too long, and especially because. Melissa has had a few treatments today. I don't want to overdo it. <laughs> there is a limit to how much holistic therapy your body can take, I think. <laughs> or maybe not, I don't know. Okay. A really, really good sign from a client is when their feet absorb the oil quite quickly, which is what the feet are doing here. So this is a really good sign that the feet are taking on board the treatment really well, which is awesome. Okay, I'm going to work along the large and small intestines now. A function to um, use the energy and the nutrients from the food we eat and send that back into the body, but also the ability, of course, to digest food. I'm gonna to come to the small intestines there, just massaging into that point. Coming down to the
just going to come back to those adrenals which felt definitely imbalanced. So we also have the hormonal system, got the diaphragm so we can work into the lungs, heart, thyroid. I'll just quickly just run down the lymphatic system. Actually, this gentle push upwards is good for promoting hormonal balance and uh, sometimes people are like, oh, I haven't shaved my legs when, <laughs> when I'm going up the ankles, but actually the most beneficial way of doing this is if there is a little bit of hair growth there because you're pushing the follicles back and it's stimulating this hormonal reaction, so it's good for bringing back into balance. Recommended for menopause, menopausal symptoms or any hormonal imbalance. Awesome. Now I'm going to just come to the solar plexus point on the body. It would just be around the tummy rib cage area. So we're going to bring the breath into that point now, the belly and the rib cage. You're ready, take a deep breath in, and as we breathe in, I push and then exhale. Good, and again, deep breath in and exhale. And then one more deep breath in. the treatment by placing my palms against the feet. Okay, release. You feel okay? <laughs> I'm just gonna pop this to the side. First, just to cleanse them actually. Put that there. A bit cold. Just give them a little wipe down. Leave the room for you to just take some time, come back into your body, come back into the space and have a drink of water and then you can just let me know when you're ready for me to come back in, okay? Right, so I've got some hot cloths and some lovely feet. <laughs> We're just going to remove these socks and put them on the radiator. Ah, oh, thank you. I hope I don't get ticklish. I shouldn't, I probably won't. I've never got ticklish when I've had it in another treatment. But I feel very nervous. <laughs> There's no need to. I'm really good with people who get ticklish. OK. So if you just separate the feet a little so I've got room for my hand in between, lovely. So nice hot cloths. And I've put some lovely Melissa Freshener which is a Melissa Hydrolat. In <laughs> fact, only this morning, 
on my YouTube, I was asked a question by a viewer asking what Melissa Freshner do I use? So there you go, I'm using it today. <laughs> Melissa on Melissa. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Melissa Freshner. In fact, last time I gave you a treatment, I used some Melissa Freshner toner for part of your facial treatment. And I can remember explaining what Melissa was good for. <laughs> oh, it's, can you smell that? It smells lovely. It's like a slight, almost like lemon, right? It's almost like lemon, yeah. Like lemon balm. Mm. Lovely. Really good for freshening, waking, cleansing cleaning. See, they look better already. There's a lot of different feet. A lot of different feet and I love them all. They're all beautiful feet. Oh, these ones are a bit chilly at the moment. They always are. Oh, cold feet. Cold feet and hands always. Yeah, or warm heart. <laughs> so, you've had reflexology before, a long Ish. time ago. Ish. Yeah. I love doing reflexology because the feet are a beautiful map of the body that are really obvious to navigate around. So this is the left side of your body, your left foot. This is the right side. This here is the same shape as your spine. This is your spine. So this is the left side of the spine. This is the right. And as we cut the body down the center, we can see this lovely shape. Now, some people have quite a pronounced arch of the foot and maybe the foot is shaped like this. It comes over here. And with you, your spine is fairly straight. So you haven't got a very pronounced arch of the foot. You've just got a, a nice small arch there. So I can see that it's actually quite long and straight rather than quite curved, yeah. yeah? And so your spine will always correlate to this shape here of your foot. Oh wow, that's so neat. Some people have a really large arch and a really large it, small of the back. So it matches up? It always matches, yeah. So all the organs contained in the upper half of the foot are the upper part of the body, the organs that contain in the upper part of the body. This is the head split into two here. And this is the neck. All the, uh, the shape here go, comes down to a narrowing at the waist here where the narrow part of the foot is, just here. And then the rounded hips are here. So if we've got quite straight hips or quite curvy hips, that will show in this outer lower part of the foot on the lateral side. So yours is quite straight. So I'd say you've got quite straight hips, the same as your spine. Oh, yeah. That's so cool. Mm. Wow. So I am going to start having a feel of your feet now. And of course I've treated a lot of feet. So I get an idea as to what's happening inside your body. That's why I love doing reflexology because it really gives you insight, inside a vision of what's going on inside. For instance, lungs, digestion, hormones, things that you can't just see or even if you're giving a massage, you can't really tell what's going on. Right. So I'm going to split the body into different systems and then check each one in turn. Okay. Um, as you can see, I've hardly got any nails at all and I file them down, especially for giving reflexology and also neck releases actually in core therapy. Right. Because there are different feelings that you will sense now. Mm. And um, Obviously, just a feeling of touch, which is just contact, that, that's good. But sometimes you might feel like a gritty feeling, like there's brown sugar under the skin. And to me, it almost feels like each of these feelings has a sound. So when I'm feeling it, it's almost like I can hear it going like this. And it's like a brown sugar crystally feeling. Um, also, 
and I can sense it as well. Sometimes I might press and you might say, wow, that's sharp. And it might feel like a needle going deep, not at the surface of the skin, but deep in. Okay. Um, so that might be a very precise area. Also, it might feel like a bruise, like you've trodden on a stone and you've still got a bruise there. Right. Yeah. Um, or it might just feel good. <laughs> you know, like, which is thumbs up, you know. I'm, I've, I've drawn your feet. Oh, oh they look so cute. <laughs> so I've, th this is exactly what your feet look like, actually. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and I'm going to be plotting out different areas that I need to be working on as, as I'm working. Okay. Oh, it's quite exciting. Okay, so yeah. let's start. So I'm going to start off by checking the solar plexus. So I've just got my thumb in an action like this. So this is the solar plexus. So if you were to say, what does the solar plexus mean? Where is that on the body? It's actually in the V of the ribs, just in and up here. It's a soft area of tissue. So our ribs come up like that and just in that upturned V. We have a soft area of tissue just underneath the diaphragm, which is obviously a, a muscle. And there is a network of nerves there, like um, in the UK, we refer to the spaghetti junction, which is a very busy collection of roads near Birmingham. And so you can imagine this collection of nerves there. And being a, a neural and a nerve area, we, feel and sense uh, tension or the opposite of tension, so like freedom, freedom and tension at the solar plexus. So to give you an example, if you had some bad news, you'd probably cover up your mm. solar plexus, whether you do it with your hand, like, <gasps> like that, right. or if, um, if you're at work, and someone walks towards you that you're, you need to defend yourself against, you think they're going to say something, then you, if you're carrying a file or a book, you probably hold mm -hmm. it against you like yeah, this. Yeah. And that covers the solar plexus. You know, so if we're holding ourselves like this, we're, we're defending ourselves. We're, we're feeling we need to, we need defense, mm. yeah. On the other hand, if we feel open and free and we trust the people we're with, uh, we don't feel that we're going to need to defend ourselves, our arms are out here, we're not, we're not covering the solar plexus up, and we're very content with ourselves. Mm. Yeah? So that's all about this solar plexus here, which is here on the foot. So this is the first area we check in reflexology, and this is a type of reflexology called Swiss reflex. And I can feel there that it feels good. It okay. feels good. Now, the type of feelings I can sense there sometimes, it can, there's a whole array of sensations. So it can feel, I think the word might be indifferent or bland, like um, maybe there's no spark or not enough spark in that person's life and they mm. just need to be ignited and to realise it's a beautiful life and get out there and enjoy life mm. because this can feel grey. Right. Yeah. Um, or it can feel tight and sharp. Uh, to, so the feeling to you would feel sharp. Okay. Uh, to me it would feel tight, like there's no movement there. Um, but no, it feels really good and open and very happy. That's good. That's really good start, isn't it? So now I'm going to check the um, sciatic nerve while I'm on the nervous system. So I'm coming from the lower back through the left buttock in this case, down the outer part of the foot. That feels okay. That's it, and the same for the right side. So I'm doing caterpillar movement. I'm just gonna do that one again. No, it feels okay. I thought I could sense something on the outside, but it feels okay. 
I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So I'm just going to make a little note about that. So moving on to the glandular system. So we're just going to work up the thyroid, which starts just by the side of, oh, am I tickling you? Any little bit. Oh, okay. So I'm just working up the um, ball of the foot to the side of it, upwards, and then to the parathyroid, which governs the thyroid just at the top there, feels fine, which is good. Now I'm going to check the pituitary gland, which is um, just like we have thumbprints or fingerprints, you've got the same on your toes. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. And so Didn't know that. where the very centre of the coil, there's probably a proper word for it, that mm. um, of the toe print, of the big toe would be is where the pituitary gland is in inside the foot so i'm just doing a very precise movement on each one now the pituitary is the controller it's the governor of our hormonal system so it controls the release of adrenaline and thyroxine from the thyroid and all our reproductive hormones. So it's really important that the pituitary gland is happy and in the right place and not feeling tight or restricted by anything around it. It feels really good to me, so okay. that's good. Now I'm going to check the skeletal system. So I'm going to come from the neck down and I don't know if you can see that but it's really lovely but your foot is bouncing back when I'm pressing you see that bounce yeah and in core therapy we look for the same thing again so when we're bouncing the shoulder down it should spring back when we're bouncing it the same with the spine yeah and your foot is responding beautifully okay. by bouncing back so i want that movement there it shows that you're fluid and soft um, I, that doesn't necessarily mean to say you're relaxed and you trust me and it means that the reflex point of this part of the spine in this case so it's cervical up here thoracics through here is responding well so just like i bounce the spine with core therapy i'm bouncing the spine with reflexology now. So there's a little bit, I don't know if you can feel that. I mean, I'm being very picky because I haven't found it much yet. So. There, around that bit. Yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit around there. Okay. And then I'm gonna come from the base of the back, from the coccyx up the right side of the sacrum. Feels okay, feels okay. So just a little point there. This is lower thoracics on the right side. Probably about T12. And actually, the core therapy that we did earlier, when I did your retests at the very end, and one of them, which was a psoas test, wasn't too happy on your right side, that was the point that yeah. I touched and said, I'll give it some Qigong now, but it probably needs a bit more. And that was that point. So I'll work on it here, that, which that's is great. That's so cool that it lines up. I, and I've only just, obviously, I didn't Yeah. I know that was going to happen. So that's, yeah. Yeah. So and just doing the <laughs> same on the other side. Coming down from the neck. Yeah, that's so interesting because I don't feel that tenderness this side at no, all. No, no, no. Feels good. Okay, so more skeletal system. Let's look at the left scapula, which is the shoulder blade, your lovely angel wing. Feels good. And then the left shoulder point, so the actual top of the shoulder. Oh, crunchy. Okay, so... Can you feel it moving around under my thumb? Um, there. I can't really tell. You see, the more I do it, the, it it'll just go because I'm actually treating it by testing it. Um, oh, I can. 
I can feel that it's different to whatever it just was. Yeah. Maybe. I find it really hard there, to tell on the pinky there. toe, though. Okay. So it feels like I'm moving around fascia underneath the surface of the skin. Okay. Yeah. So it's sort of slipping and sliding away from me as I'm, as I'm pressing. Yeah. But the more I'm doing it, it's treating it, it's going. Yeah, I can't really um, show it you as an example because it's getting better every time. <laughs> so now the shoulder point of this side, coming round that rounded shoulder here. So did you say the right foot is the right side of the yeah. body? The left. So it just aligns this way, so yeah. that would be this shoulder. Yeah, yeah. And again, this one's clicking a bit in a slightly different place. Um, this one was sort of at the back of the shoulder. This one's more at the top. That aligns perfectly with my shoulder pain. Oh, yeah. right. You've got shoulder pain. Oh, yeah, just always. I think it's my bad posture, but I've always got, like, achy shoulders. Okay. This is always the worst one. Okay. We'll treat those. And now going to treat or have a look at elbows, which are just above that pronounced bone there. So just above the elbows, then the hip on the bone. And then just below are the knees. Of course, I treated your left knee earlier. So let's have a look at that feels fine now yeah that feels fine hips I think I might put hips down they feel okay but they just feel a little bit pronounced uh, another word I'd say for that is vulnerable and um, yeah and this one's the left one is starting to click a bit it's so weird that you can only feel it on one side like I've never done feet in such detail to be able to feel these differences it's it's really like yeah it's like magic <laughs> mm. um, so let's look at the respiratory system so I'm going to look at your sinuses in the left part of the face just by touching each toe pad they feel fine same on this side, fine, sinuses feel good. So now the uh, eye on your right side feels good. Ear, oh, clicking immediately. Oh, that's not <laughs> nice, is it? You don't like that? That's so weird. Is it's it? Oh, it's, it's just so weird. Good. It's not sore. Uh, that's comfortable you don't like that clip. look at you yeah and so so that was your right ear so left ear this quite different fine. quite different that's so weird yeah and then your left eye fine so it's only your right ear anything with your right ear no you know obviously ears are balance sound tinnitus hearing um but also the ear relates to the kidneys because the ear is the same shape as our kidneys. So, yeah. um, and in reflexology terms, you can treat the whole body through by treating the ear as well. Right. So that's an upside down fetus. This is the head. So where we get pierced ears is our eye. Um. And so apparently that's why pirates used to pierce the ear of the eye that they look through their oh. uh, telescope through in order to give them better vision, because it's like constant acupuncture. Oh, by having a hole there. Oh, that's cool. Mm. <laughs> um, okay, so... Oh, lungs. So these are the pads. Oh, that one's clicking straight away. Yeah, that, that one's clicking, but only on your right side. So I'll just make a little note of it, but 
I think I might have already got rid of it. Yeah, um, I can't really feel that one as much no. as the ear. Yeah, but it's in yeah, different that... places I can tell more. Yes. So now I'm going to look at the digestive system. So I'm just padding through the small intestine on the right side. And I'm going in the direction that the food needs to go. And then down the ileocecal valve feels fine, which is the one we tested earlier when I asked you to put your own fingers on that place. Um, the and then, stomach one. Yeah. And then up the ascending colon, cross the transcending colon and carry on to the other foot. And down the descending, oh, a little bit there. Did you feel it pop? Yeah, it's popping, but a tiny bit, but I will make a note. And then pancreas and stomach, good. Okay, uh, now let's look at the um, lymph system. So I'm going to come the left front of the foot. That's a bit tight on that side compared to this. So that doesn't feel swollen, it feels just fine. It's just because lymph system can feel swollen with waste. Right. Um, but that just feels a bit tight, so that just needs loosening up, up a bit. And then round the inguinal lymph in the groin. It feels fine. And now the reproductive system. So coming to the right ovary, which is just halfway along the line between the ankle bone and the point of the heel. Does that feel sore? A bit. Yeah. And then across the fallopian tube. Let go, let go. To the uterus. Same place on the other side, the other ovary. Sore again? Yeah, not as much though. Okay. It might just be it's that ovary working right now. And how does it feel in the centre then? Fine. Yeah, good. And now the urinary system. So starting at the adrenal, kidney, that's sore. And then coming down the ureter to the bladder. Oh, cold foot. <laughs> and then adrenal, kidney, hioi. <laughs> Ureter, bladder. So both kidneys need a bit of TLC. Right, I think I've tested everywhere. So I am going to cover them up so that they warm a little and then go and make some cream up. Thank you. Shoulders, kidneys, skeletal with the back as well. Hips, yeah, it's, it's skeletal and respiratory, mainly. A little bit of hormonal and uh, lymph, but yeah, skeletal and respiratory. So I do wonder whether your body is fighting something off at the moment, maybe to the lung or the ear. And actually it's the say it's right side lung and right side ear, so maybe. Um, so I think Cedarwood shouts out at me. Come on, Cedarwood, where are you? Cedarwood. Oh, unless I finished it. Okay, I'm gonna go for another then. Oh, okay. Right, oh, here it is. Cedarwood. Okay, well, we'll test that on you, test that on you. Cedarwood, so skeletal, respiratory. So maybe time, 
because that will kill any bugs that you might be fighting off. Roman chamomile for skeletal, anti-inflammatory. Well, with respiratory as well. Uh, oh, eucalyptus stegariana, beautiful lemon eucalyptus. Uh, rosemary fab for everything, especially those two systems. Frankincense, fab for both. Frankincense, yeah, definitely. Um, clove for a laugh, because it tends to win every time. Oh, lemon. Tea tree, or is that too many? Right, we've got nine there. Right, we're going to test these. Now doing the testing of these lovely oils. With this hand, can you give me a little finger and thumb? Yeah, and I'm going to try and pull them apart. You're going to keep them together. Okay. And hold. I remember this with you. That <laughs> rings a bell. Can we try this hand instead? <laughs> and hold. Okay. Right. Oh, it's, it's, it's not good enough. <laughs> Sorry. I don't mean you're not good enough. I mean the test. I am very bad at it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. No, but not everyone is, so it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We'll find another one. So, nice straight arm like we did in core therapy. So I'm going to try and push. Can you just take that hand off your body? And you're going to hold up, resist me, and hold much better okay yeah. so I put a certain amount of pressure on I mean I could have got you to the couch but it would have been a fight so I just wanted to see how much resistance and there was a, a good amount and okay. now we're going to compare that resistance to when you each one of these essential oils is on you so I'm not going to tell you what they are because you'll be influenced yeah so right the label isn't showing oh, okay yeah. and hold that's a pass and hold. That's a pass. It'd be funny if I liked them more. And hold. A little bit juddery. Mm. It hurt me. <laughs> and hold. Pass. And hold. Jittery. And hold. Yeah. My lovely cedarwood. And hold. Beautiful. I think you're going to have a choice here. You've got five so far. And hold. Lovely. Yeah. How much stronger you are with this than, than that test. I know. Last one. And hold. No, that was weaker. I wonder which ones they didn't like. You didn't like, but this is only today, remember. Another day, your body might say, yay. Yeah. So, frankincense, lemon, and Roman chamomile. Ooh. Do you want to know the yeses? Yeah. We've got lots, and you can choose, because I won't be using this many. So, we've got clove, clove bud, tea tree, rosemary, organic, Eucalyptus stegariana, which is a lemon eucalyptus, it's beautiful. Cedarwood atlas and thyme, sweet thyme. Oh, there's so many. Do I just use one? No, let's do three. Okay. Um, do you remember them? I love eucalyptus. Yeah. And cedarwood. Yeah, lovely. But I can't decide on the third one. So that's good because cedarwood is a bass note and eucalyptus is a top note. Okay. So they would, uh, the cedarwood will hold the eucalyptus because eucalyptus is volatile. So okay. excellent choice. Wow. So we can go for another or just use those. So we've also got clove and tea tree, rosemary and thyme. 
My gut's saying clove. Yeah. But I don't even know what clove smells like, so I don't know why oh, my gut is really saying clove. it's really strong. But do you know what? I told this to someone the other day. I have tested hundreds of people with kinesiology for essential oils, and clove hardly ever fails for mm. anyone in any circumstance and any illness, any issue, because it just is uh, like a top buster. It's clove, eucalyptus stegoriana, and cedarwood. Putting the cedarwood in first. A thick oil. Ah, oh, it smells divine. Wow. Do love cedarwood. Okay, putting the eucalyptus stag in next. One, two, three. So we've got two of cedarwood, three of eucalyptus stegoriana. And then we're going to use. I'm just going to try one of clove to start off with. Just going to have a little mix. Oh, it's nice and warm. It's been on the aroma stone. No, I think I'm going to put another one of clove in. There we are. Another little mix. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, you'll like this. So, oh, that's amazing. You chose them. That's so nice. Yeah. So, I don't want to give you an oily lip, but can I put it somewhere that you'll smell it? Maybe on your neck, would yeah. that be all right? And then you can smell it during the treatment. Yeah. Oh, it's like the perfect amount of eucalyptus in there. Yeah. Just a three, I think. Like, no, yeah, it's oh, yeah. that's so nice. But remember it's a, a lemon eucalyptus, so it's it's makes you think that it's lemon. But it's a secret, it's not lemon at all. It's it's eucalyptus. Oh you're right, that feels a little bit warm, it's lovely. Yeah, it's all heated. Yeah. So first of all, I'm just going to massage, having now applied the essential oils and the carrier. I've just put the essential oils in a organic sunflower carrier oil. I just love sunflower. It behaves so beautifully. It's full of vitamins. It's like happiness and sunshine. <laughs> so at this point, I can explain what I'm doing still, but there is less explanation because that's more in the testing side than the treatment. So sometimes clients will close their eyes and relax at this point, which you can do if you want, or if you're interested and want to listen to what I have to say, then you can watch. It's completely up to you, whatever you want to do. So just a little massage. Try not to tickle. Going under the sole. Creating some softness in the muscle groups. And then circling the ankle, letting the foot go. That's it, lovely. Circling in one direction and the other, supporting at the ankle. And round, nicely relaxed, lovely. And coming onto the left foot, circling at the ankle and back. Round the ankle joint. Lovely down the sole, 
Okay. Just having a little feel within the systems of the body. Yeah, something there. That was that lung point on the left, uh, the right hand side. Okay, so I'm going to start off on the solar plexus, just like I did when I was testing. Coming round in a clockwise rotational direction, using the pad of my thumb rather than the end. Just wanting to instill some reassurance, some trust, a good pressure, just nice. Not too gentle or firm, just a nice pressure. Reassuring the solar plexus and the whole neural system. All the nerves can just relax. Nice. Coming back to that sunshine and happiness of the sunflower oil. That lovely yellow energy that the Solar plexus stimulates golden sunlight. And then I want to work on the spine next, creating some structure and some length down and up that spine. I'm actually pushing as well as clearing with a row of finger pads coming right down to the coccyx up through the lumbar thoracic so there's a lovely channel here perfect for a row of fingers to clear down the side of that spine it's feeling better already i can still feel where that little peaked part of the spine is that needs a little TRC but it's, it's already getting better. So then I'm just going to concentrate with those fingers at first and then bring the thumb in and caterpillar bounce through that particular point of that lower thoracic which is about T11, 12, down to L1. Quite often when I'm doing this I feel it myself. Some sort of sensing that tightness. Yes, in the foot, but more importantly in this part of the back. Helping it clear. creating some strength. You see the spine is a really strong system of bones and holds up our whole body and the thoracics are big vertebrae, especially these lower ones, chunky big vertebrae that help us rotate, support the lower ribs protect the organs and about this point would be kidneys and adrenals. It's also some of the digestive system. So I'm just helping to instill some strength in this part of the thoracics. Tell the thoracics everything's okay. They can breathe, they can expand the lungs and contract. They can go with the flow, let the breath come in and out. That's it, that's much better. Good. Okay, so moving on to the lungs. Might as well treat both lungs at the same time. Coming up the outer part of the lungs in a, again, a caterpillar bouncing action, working upwards, almost like the breath 
is being pushed out and expelled, coming out of those lungs, bouncing up. Lovely. So the point that was sore earlier was here. Uh, it feels good now already. So coming on to the shoulder points, back to the skeletal system. So just looking at the bone of the shoulder point, just under the deltoid, coming around and holding the foot so it doesn't move too much with the fingers but then rotating with the end of the thumb pad and it's quite nice to do both feet at the same time because it gives me a little perspective on comparing one side to the other although frequently I see one foot present completely differently to the other foot on clients so sometimes it can be a whole host of different structure. The, fit can, the foot can look quite different to the other or it can present different congestion points within the meridians when you're looking for reflexology zones. Uh, but again, these are starting to clear already. Yeah, so Melissa talked about shoulders earlier and how uh, they can be tense, probably work, but also the amount mm. you carry, maybe? Yeah, I think so, like my bag and also my tripods Yeah, on the shoulders. So just feeling into particularly that right shoulder point, it was quite what I would call sore, and I know it's not my shoulder, but I feel like I can feel it. Mm. Um, it was clicking quite a lot earlier, but that feels so much better now. I think you're going to feel greatly relieved. Um, what else are we going to look at? We're going to look at the hips, both sides. Now, these di didn't present an issue earlier, but I just felt that they were protruding and that can lead them for, to feeling vulnerable, like they're sticking out a bit. Um, they can get caught in life. Um, hips are so important, just like the neck, the whole pelvic girdle. And we need to be flexible with our hips. We need to be able to turn and support and carry, bend. Yeah, so again, just like it was with the right shoulder, the left, uh, the right hip is clicking a bit now as well. So I can feel, um, like I mentioned earlier, sometimes I can hear a sound with mm. a feeling and this sound is that feeling right. that, that it's going over uneven ground like um, crystals. Mm, it's already going though. So I'm just using two finger pads on both sides, both hips. Yeah, wonderful. Brilliant. Um, the ovary came up on this foot as well. There's a lot on the right side. So I'm just going to support the foot up a little and then work into the outer side. Yeah, that does feel a bit sore. This is the one you grimaced at earlier, I think. Yeah. So this is the right ovary. Just going to take it a little bit more gently because it does feel a bit sore. So 
just like with tween R, we tend to bounce, bend and rock the spine when we're working on the back with core therapy and with reflexology it's a sort of similar push I'm bending this part at, at the structure of the foot that marks the ovary in order to create some softness there some some bounce so that it stretches back once I once I push it once I bend it it's not quite doing that yet I need to spend a little bit longer here Yeah, I can feel it. Can you? Yeah. So it's not as bad as it was earlier then? It's not as tender, but it, it's kind of like what you said, it feels like gritty sand or something that's being moved about. Mm. It's really it's a weird sensation. Mm. That's better. Other ovary didn't come up, so I'm now looking at... Uh, there was just one place on the left that didn't come up on the right, so this is down the descending colon. Yeah, it is quite tight there. There. Oh, can you feel that? That's quite tight. So I'm just, again, caterpillar tracks from where the colon bends round from the transcending which goes across the abdomen yeah again I think I need to be treating quite gently here okay so coming down that's it just relax the foot I'm going a little bit more gently, just encouraging that downward movement. And I know with the abdomen itself, when I'm working there, I tend to work up. It's almost like you have to sh shift some grit out of a tube. And sometimes if it's stuck in a particular place, you have to agitate it in the wrong direction first before it'll start giving and breaking up and then you can push it in the right direction. Okay. I don't know if we know that we do that, but we do do it quite a lot with things. We push it in the wrong direction first. Oh. So that works with the abdomen or with feet as well. When we're shifting something, we just do it a little and then it'll give, it'll soften and then you can go in the correct direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and then out, might as well, seeing as I'm down that way, might as well bring it all the way down and out to the end of the colon. So I've worked on the hip, shoulder, and descending colon on the left side of the foot, and I've worked on the ear, shoulder, lung, hip, ovary and back on the right side of the body, of the foot, I still need to look at the right cervical lymph and then finish off with the urinary detox, the clear out by working on the kidneys. Lovely, okay, so let's look at this. Cervical lymph here. 
So this is the lymph factory that's in the chest. Um, it feels fine now. Quite often other systems of the body will be cleared when you're working on original uh -huh. systems. So that feels good. I'm glad I checked it. Uh, so looking at the urinary system. Uh, sorry, the yeah, urinary or excretory system. So we're coming down through the adrenal, kidney, not as bad as it was. That's one that you grimaced at earlier. Yeah, it's fine now. Quite so bad. And then down the ureter to the bladder, fine. Just checking the other one. Adrenal, which helps calm our stress response. Kidney, all right, yeah. yeah. Ureter to the bladder. I'm going to cross my hands over so I can work on both at the same time. There we are. They feel so much better. <laughs> so earlier, I can't remember what we were doing at the time, but I talked about kidneys and the fact that the kidney relates to a sensation of fear in the body if the kidney is compromised in some way, if it's not having enough fluids being flushed out, if it's not being warmed, if it's left to be cold, or if the back is tight at the kidney area just above the waist. Um, so it's really nice to repeat this movement, which helps reassure, warm and flush out the kidneys all in one go. Obviously, we need to marry this up with drinking water at the same time in order to help that detox process. Oh, so much better. Lovely. Really nice. Okay, just a little massage to finish. Actually, what I'm going to introduce is a little Brazilian toe technique where I start off on the middle toe and it's just a sense of warming and clearing any residual waste energy that needs to be recycled. Come back round and receive as a renewed vigour, renewed energy. But for now, we're just channeling out any energies we no longer require. Coming on to the fourth toe. It's just a really nice sensation of letting go. Second
resilient toe technique is one of those therapies that you could just carry on doing for hours. It's so relaxing. And I know through having it done myself that it just feels like it's something that you never want to end. Even though you're getting rid of adverse energies, it still feels like the body is growing in energy and feeling supported and nurtured. using this, this sheet to pad off any excess oil. Then I'm going to put on these new, fresh, warmed socks from the radiator. Nice and fluffy socks, perfect for after reflexology to warm the feet and ankles. So nice. Like walking on a cloud. It is. <laughs> And they look pretty too. They do, they're really cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the reflexology. Thank you so much, that felt amazing. Yeah. You look quite dreamy. I, di I didn't know feet could feel so amazing, it was so relaxing. Oh. I wasn't ticklish at all in the end, it was great. Good. Yeah, thank you so much. Absolute pleasure. Pleasure, lovely oh. lady. Oh. <laughs> So leave these on for a little while because your feet will need the warmth before you put your own socks on, which are also on the radiator. Okay. So when you get up, get up really carefully because I think you probably entered quite a comatose state in your own lovely little world when you were having the Swiss reflex treatment. Um, do drink lots of water after the therapy to help flush out the kidneys and I just want to say thank you so much for visiting and I have loved treating you Melissa. Oh, thank you so much, thank you for having me, I've, I've loved receiving it too. Oh bless thank you. Thank you. So I usually get people to wear an eye mask which I think you would you be happy to? Yeah, yeah. I'd love that, thank you. It's a kitty one. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> so yeah. Thank you. Um, just so obviously today we're going to do reflexology, but a couple of things. Can I just ask you just to undo that? Oh, yeah, of course. I'm going to do, well, before you put the mask down, I'm going to do some back flowers. So I just picked out uh, a few today for you, uh, which will help with grounding and balancing. Uh, then I'm going to do a bit of a sound bowl. So you're going to definitely fall asleep. You can yeah. already see him. Yeah, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. yeah, this is the seduction room. Huh? <laughs> um, just a few minutes, you know, intuitively, maybe five or so. Um, and then I'll move on to the reflexology. I'll clean your feet. Then I'm going to work with one foot at a time. Just really let go, enjoy, relax. Um, and as mentioned, obviously, my treatment is going to be about just working with you in a state. And then at the end, then I'll discuss what I've picked up. Yeah? Okay. Is that OK? Yeah. OK, perfect. Great. Let Thank me give you. you a couple of flowers each. So same thing, just lift your tongue. I'll just do two drops of each, you can swallow. You know, I've never heard the train before. <laughs> Yeah, it makes you notice yeah. it, doesn't it? Okay. 
Let me just check that everything's okay. Just hands at your side just to see if this works. Just to double check. I've learned over the years. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'll just wait, and then it's like, doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. So I just want to bend that. Okay. Right, so you can put your mask on. Thank you. It's going to connect with your body. And always when you come into the space, just inviting you to tap into your breath. And just creating that awareness in the belly. Throughout the session, you can just take nice, slow breaths. Just slowing down from your day. And integrating with your body, your mind, your energy, your emotions. And just having a quick little check-in. What needs attention, or calming, or grounding?
going to invite you now to take a nice deep breath in and out. And in. And out. And last one. And that marks our session for today. How are you feeling? Good, yeah. So sleepy. I'm sleepy. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to know what has come up? Yeah, um, I'd love to know. I'll give you a second. Uh, do you want me to get you a glass of water? I guess, please. Okay, give me a second. Did you drift off? Were you able to relax? Yeah, it's really relaxing. I feel like something about how like all your, all my focus like goes there makes mm. it so relaxing. Mm. I think um, why I think reflexology is a very important modality to have on hand is because we sit all day do yeah. nothing with our feet yeah. and all of our blood and everything sits to the surface and we don't really exercise is not really a lot we sit at mm. desk jobs it really takes a lot to move so it's nice to actually give attention to an yeah. area that's always clogged in shoes and socks Definitely. um but yeah so i mean i guess no one i don't know if anyone knows what the reflexology is about but reflexology is a traditional chinese medicine practice and they do get upset if you call it a foot massage. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a foot massage. Right. It's a sequence of techniques. And whoever discovered it, obviously, thousands of years ago, was able to pinpoint that a different part on your foot will represent a different part in your body. Yeah. So they use the word, it's a microcosm of the body. So you can find your whole body in your feet in your hands, in your mm. face, in your ears, um, and some say as well as in your stomach. So then you can obviously discover what the imbalances are. So as a reflexologist, we look for uric acid buildup, which feels like little crunchy crystals. So sometimes when you receive, you might feel them. Yeah, or you can like feel the them bumps. pop or disperse. So. Mm. Um, just depending on, like you say, for you, you're probably very aware because you're going straight to your feet, but some people just conk <laughs> out and they, <laughs> they don't care what you do, really. Um, but in terms of today's session, uh, your feet are pretty, like, in a very good way. There's only just a couple of areas that came up for me. So on your um, right side, I picked up a lot to do with your neck. Okay neck and sinuses so blockages mm. in the nose and the ears okay. so i thought have you been sick do you feel like you're getting sick really oh. maybe yeah some congestion i guess i've had really bad hay fever yeah okay <laughs> Rather, i haven't sense. had a cold but i have had like sniffles all the time but that's just because hay fever is like constant yeah. at the moment yeah of course it's yeah. high at this time so i picked that up a lot so there's a lot of congestion there mm. um the next thing i picked up was in your colon okay so actually i don't know if we can see the picture here but just on this side of your colon up here okay so what we call your ascending colon um, so I picked up a lot of blockages here. So I went over that. If you were with me, I was going over quite a bit as well. Okay. Um, so I picked that up over there. Um, and then in your ovaries on both sides, I picked up. So likely mm. you're on your cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I picked that up as well. Um, what else did I pick up? I think that was basically it. And a little bit here in on your left side, in your lower back. Okay. I don't know if you're having any pain. It might be because of the cycle. You're just putting your posture out a yeah. little bit. Um, 
but yeah, but then mainly again your sinuses have come up showing a bit of congestion. Yes, yeah, so like I say, eyes, ears, nose, throat, that mm -hmm. kind of yeah. full spectrum. Lovely. Um, <laughs> are you coughing a lot at all? Um, not too much, more just like the breathing, not breathing, mm. like breathing too shallow. Yeah, a little bit of the diaphragm here on this mm -hmm. right foot and then a bit of the lungs on this side came up. But pretty much everything else is good though. That's really good to hear. Yeah, because if, if, for example, if mm. we go out of the hay fever season, that mm. should pretty much clear up. Yeah. Obviously, your cycle will pass and you'll have <laughs> yeah. a few days off. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, yeah, so the breathing and everything else. Um, and then I guess maybe in terms of uh, the digestion, I don't know, maybe mm. some diet, maybe looking at your maybe allergies or yeah. intolerances to food. Mm. I'm just seeing, but like I say, it's just here. But it's very common um, to get uh, what we call the ileocecal valve. It's like, oh, thank God I have a picture, isn't it? It helps. Yeah. So basically, um, in between here is all your small intestine. Mm. And then it will join to this picture. And then that, um, not picture, sorry, to your large intestine. And then that is a valve connecting. But usually when we don't eat our food properly or we're not digesting or we eat things that we shouldn't or we overeat, this can cause damage to this valve. And then a lot will pass into the large intestine when it's not ready. So we can say it leaks. Okay. Leaks in. And then there's a lot of irritation that can get caused here. So a lot of people have pain or blockage in the lower right-hand side of the abdomen. Oh. Um, and then, yeah, sometimes blockages can happen or, you know, um, and then that can trigger sometimes diarrhea. Okay. Or sometimes you don't have enough hydration in your body, which can happen a lot, especially on your cycle as well. Yeah. And then that can turn into constipation and then that gets stuck there and then the bloating begins. Yeah. Oh, so it's often the lower right hand side. That yeah. So it, that's where that. it starts. So it's like... Yeah. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, most, most, I mean, obviously, because I do colonic hydrotherapy, most people have problems here. Oh, okay. Because literally, where it's like really by the skin of the teeth, it's like, I'm trying to get out. Oh. Uh, and it literally gets stuck here and blocked here. And that's why people, when they do, they come for colonic. It's just about removing that blockage. Mm. And then the cycle can start again and people can go naturally. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, thank um, you. Let me just clean your feet. Yeah. Do you have any questions or? Um. Trying to think. You've relaxed me so much. My brain is going empty. <laughs> That's when I've done my job, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I. I don't know. I'm always, I've always been fascinated by reflexology. Like, I think I'm also. I've heard that there's one on your ears as well that I found really interesting. Like mm -hmm. the idea that the points are on the ears too. But yeah, I think it's such a great way of like, because it felt like such a like self-care ritual, mm -hmm. but you're also getting like the knowledge from it as well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think this was like my favorite treatment so far. <laughs> yeah, it's the first so nice. one I ever started with out of the million things I do. Reflexology was the first one. Oh, really? Yeah, so it's a bit, in a sense, sacred to me. Mm -hmm. And it's respecting, like I say, a body part that not many people... I always joke, like, when I when I have people come in for sessions, no one really touches this part of your body. It's kind of, in a sense, more intimate than <laughs> other yeah. body parts. It's so definitely if... weird to get used to the feeling. Yeah. Because the first few seconds, I'm always here, like, oh, yeah, my feet are out. That's really <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, we're not used to it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's just giving love and attention to, ideally, the whole body, but mm -hmm. to something, to me, that's so critical, because in chiropractics, you know, if you don't have your feet, your posture is out, and if your spine is out, your, your feet are um, shaped differently, so I notice, obviously, because mm -hmm. I've got that creepy talent now that, like, when people are walking in the streets, I'm just like, do-do-do-do, what's wrong with you, do-do-do-do, so it's like, oh... Um, but just even sitting uh, or laying down, you can see how your feet will sit out. So yours are quite um, rotated out. So it mm. will tell me how your pelvic floor and your hips are sitting and your posture oh. is. Um, because ideally, if the perfect person is, I would say should be straight. But mm. 
and then even between your own two feet, you're doing a different dance anyway, right? <laughs> so two left feet is quite literal, no? Um, so yeah, it's just, but again, the, I think it's just about bringing presence to this because it's a very, I would say, gentle therapy, but it can bring so much more awareness. Yeah. And like loving your feet more and then mm. it's like, okay, what can I change? And then it's like, okay, do I need to drink more water? Do I need to change my diet? Yeah. Um, and then that slowly brings the change um, that people need. And then all of a sudden you start getting healthier and you try new things. Mm. You surround yourself by better people, you know. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I feel like I'm living a different reality now. Yeah. You have like a new new life, like a cat who has nine lives and, you know. <laughs> you so, get a new one. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank Aww. you so much. Oh, thank you yeah. so much. <laughs> I think I've cleaned your feet enough. If you want more, let me know. Oh, okay. But your body absorbed it. I use um, beeswax for the treatment. Yeah, the oil, like the feeling of it was amazing. Mm. The smell as well. Mm. Yeah, I really, yeah. I love it the most. Out of all the things I've tried over the years, this is definitely the winner. <sighs> oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Do you want to sleep here? <laughs> Honestly, the, when I... You did the first, um, you were like, I'll take a deep breath. And I was like, oh my God, no, I want to stay asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I was so out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, I thought it was that. Like, in my head, I was trying to work out what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, it must be tuning forks. Yeah. They felt, like, so cool, but... It was so interesting how different areas you could feel it so much more. Mm, I put them on the areas that came up as imbalanced. Uh, I just thought use more resources. But yeah. Um, yeah, they're very powerful. I got I received these as a gift from someone, and when I googled them, they're very expensive. So I was like, thank you. Very oh, much. good gift then. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, thank you. Um, but apparently, uh, these are how can I say? They're made from very special metals. Mm. And they've been programmed in a very special frequency, and they say it's like according to the like actual planets. Mm -hmm. So I've got a whole set of them, as uh, so they each mean something else. So I just work again, as I yeah. always do with intuition, and I just pulled mm. out the these. Winter. Yeah, these. I chose three, but in the end, I only used these two. Um, and just yeah. It's so cool. Yeah.